What you guys got another video here for you. This is the Synology DS920 Plus. Backing up critical data has never been easier with the DS920 Plus from Synology. This is a disk station. It's an awesome bit of equipment. If you've not got a NAS uh, setup, then obviously you want to be thinking about buying a Synology because they're some of the best NAS drives that you can buy today. This is exactly what you're going to get in the kit. I'll show you everything here and how to set it up. You've got your quick installation guide. Pretty simple stuff here. All self-explanatory, but you can read the booklet here, which shows you exactly what to do on how to get set up. I'll show you all of this stuff uh, in this video. Now, the screws here that come in a the kit, these are for your 2.5-inch drives in case you want to use 2.5 inch drives instead of three and a half inch drives you've got your power cable here and your power brick this goes to power the actual unit the good thing about this is this external power device instead of built into the unit which means if it fails you can replace it at some stage you've got yourself two ethernet cables here as well in the kit and we've also got the unit itself and also in this kit i've got uh, the snv 3400 400 gigabyte now this unit does come with two built-in m.2 slots in it which means you can have cache acceleration by installing two of these i've got one of these to install we can always add another one at a later date now the cpu is a celeron j4125 64-bit architecture four cores and also it's a clock speed of 2.0 base clock and also boosts up to 2.7 gigahertz now we also have four gigabytes of DDR4 non-ECC RAM inside here, which can be upgraded to another stick of RAM, which would take it to a total of eight gigabytes. Two four gigabyte sticks can be installed in here. Maximum capacity will be 64 terabytes at 16 terabyte drives times four. Capacity may vary by RAID types. Maximum raw capacity with expansion units is 144 terabytes. That's 64 terabytes plus 16 terabytes drives times five. So that's a total of maximum of 108 terabytes on a single volume. The drive caddies are made of plastic and they are a toolless design, which makes it very easy to install. You will need to use screws if you're gonna be using uh, the 2.5 inch drives on here like solid state drives or something like that but if you're using three and a half inch mechanical drives then you can use the tallest design so we've got our power button here we also got a usb 3.0 port on the front we also have some uh, status indicator lights here as well on the front here on the side we have the logo with some ventilation through there as well on the back we have our fans these are system fans we've got two of these on here to keep the drives nice and cool also on here we have our one gigabit ethernet ports on here we also have the reset button on there as well on the back we also have the eSATA port on there and also our power port for the actual unit itself as well we have the uh, Kensington uh, security slot on here as well on the back up there and we also have another uh, USB 3.0 port on there as well which is useful so let's go ahead and uh, flip this back around we've got some more ventilation on that side there now on the bottom of the device we do have those slots for our M.2 slots here we can remove these slots here then marked one and two here and we can put in our little drives here we've got them anti-slip rubber feet on here to stop the unit slipping around and stop it vibrating which is nice and again, inside the unit, you can see we've got that controller card there where we can put in our drives. This is what they slot into. Very nice and clean inside here. Aluminium uh, outside to hold the drive bays in, which is quite nice as well. And there we've got our slot. This is our memory slot for our upgrade. If you want to put another four gig memory slot in here, you can do. We also take it to a total eight gigabytes which is a nice added bonus as well. So let's get that uh, NVMe uh, drive in here as well. This is a very simple installation, uh, toolless design. Got that little notch there, and we just use uh, slot one, and we'll put it into slot one inside here. So you just remove this, and you can see it says one on the board there. Just navigate and put this into position here, and basically slot her in. 
and then we just need to clip this down. Now we can add two of these drives inside here which will add our SSD cache and run up to 20 times faster input output response without using the front drive base which is an added bonus. So let's go ahead and put the cover back on and uh, we're ready to go. So I'm just going to put these drives in. I've got these Iron Wolf drives here so I'm just going to put these into the unit itself and of course this is the tallest design they just slot straight in push them up the top and then click them into position they do have a locking mechanism on them and again uh, we're just going to slot these into position and that's that one done now to slot these into their little caddies here all you need to do is put the drive in like so make sure all of the lines are lined up like this so the holes you can see them there and you can just use these little uh, fastening strips here just to click them into position and that should hold the drive into position now of course if you're using a two and a half inch drive inside here you will need to use the screws and screw them through the bottom there but once they're in position like that they're ready to go and we can now put this drive in and put some power to the unit and then power it on for the first time so let's go ahead and push this into position and then click it down the bottom like so. Very simple and easy to do. So all I will do now is add in the power lead and the Ethernet cable and then we can power the unit on. So let's power it on for the first time and once we power it on you should see the light flash in there. Uh, the status indication lights will start to flicker as well and then we can move over to the computer and we can start to configure this and get it set up. So I'm going to go to find.synology.com and it will try to find the Synology uh, NAS on my network. As you can see here, it's, it has found it and I can connect to this by just doing this now. If yours doesn't get uh, found, all you need to do is go to Synology's website and go to the download uh, center, select NAS and then select your version of NAS drive that you are using and download the software which will help you uh, detect and set it up once you find your uh, NAS drive here all you need to do is go to uh, desktop utilities and what you're looking for is this section here Synology Assistant and download uh, the Windows version if you're using Windows or Linux if you're using Linux and so on connect your device by hitting the connect button and uh, accept their terms of conditions and click OK and we should now see the setup button here just hit the setup button very simple and easy to do and it wants to install the disk station manager which is the dsm let that go ahead you can do it manual install but we're just going to go install now and we're going to allow this to go through so what we're going to do is put the tick in the tick box here and click ok it's very simple and easy to do this will start to install disk manager it will start to initialize format the system partitions and download and the software and get it all ready to get installed you can see it's starting to install and compiling it and it will say restarting your Synology NAS and it will give you a countdown timer now you need to create an administrator account for your Synology NAS you can put in your name here and username and password set that all up and you should move on to the next stage like this this is to set up quick connect I'm going to skip this for now but you can set that up at a later date Next, you're all done, so all I need to do is put the tick in, uh, share my Synology device over my network. I'm going to allow that to go and click go here, and this will set it up. Okay, so now we are ready to set up our drives and get them all set up so we can start putting data on our NAS drives. So let me just close this off here and we'll get set up here. So go to control panel here. Inside your control panel, you can uh, toggle to basic mode or advanced mode you've got your quick connect here if you wanted to set this up now you can do this but I'm going to do this at a later date it's very simple and easy to do go to the shared folder area here and we need to click on create create and then we need to create a new volume here once this is open this is our uh, storage manager here we haven't got any more volume set up here yet so we need to go volume and it will tell us there's no volume set up on your system and that's because we haven't set them up now you can either do a quick setup here very simple and easy to do I'll go through both of these just to quickly show you uh, if you don't want to go through the quick setup and you want to go for the custom one there is a custom available um, if you are more advanced and you want to go through here let me just show you what's in here so you can basically go to create a new storage and then click next 
and you've got best performance and also higher flexibility it just depends how you want to set yours up so let me just do higher flexibility for this one so once you've got this one selected all you need to do is move on down to the next button so let's go ahead and do that click next and now we can choose our raid type we can put a, a name up here if we want to uh, so raid 5 that will be for a minimum of um, free drives here so if you wanted to do that you can set this up here just like so and then all you need to do is go through here you would need to understand what these are if you want to go through the custom section uh, but if you don't you can just use the quick one which I'll show you as well so let's go ahead and uh, click next here just to see uh, what we can do after this stage here so when you go next you would then go through to the next phase here which it shows you the drives in here and it'll give you some information and you can click next and you would then start to set up uh, your system here so just go next again you'll see all the data on here will be added okay and then you can just choose your file system here uh, so basically you would choose your file system whichever one you want to choose um, I'm going to choose this top one here and uh, we'll move on to the next step so let's go ahead I'm just reading through these as I go so this is the area here where we can set this up and then we can set this in stone and click next and away we go so once you're happy with all your settings here you can then click on the next button and then once we've done this it will give us one more which we can apply all these settings and this will set up our volumes so if we wanted to do that we can do all this by clicking on apply so going back onto the quick section here you can see raid type shr now shr is one shr created with only one drive will not be able to tolerate drive failure and uh, that's basically how that's set up here if you set this up as quick so if you go to shr-2 you would need to fully populate all of those by the looks of it let's see here yeah you would need a minimum number of four drives there okay so that's basically how you can set that up on there and you just go next and you'd see the same uh, choose a drive here and you could go next and then click OK and go through here and choose your selection here for your file system and you would then go through the next section here and click apply and it will get all this all set up for you okay and that's basically how that is set up very simple and easy to do and uh, one drive fault tolerance on there so that's it so basically you got that set up and it will start to save and load all your system and you can see here now volume one and it will go through and start to create all this uh, for us this does take a bit of time because it needs to go through and set this up for us but just be patient and uh, it will get things ready for you and you will see a bit of red writing coming up down underneath where it says creating here and uh, this will take a bit of time to go through and get that set so you can just leave that in the background um, getting set up there so let's see whether this uh, parity uh, comes up here it should come up in a minute there we go parity so it's coming up there so just let that set itself up so in the meantime I can set up the SSD cache if I wanted to by clicking on the SSD cache here there's no SSD cache in your system and that's because we need to create it so you can create this one here you can see read only cache and we can only create the read only cache because we only have one uh, SSD in there so we need to put two in if we want to do read and write cache you use two or more SSDs to create that so we've only got one so we're going to do this and then we can select the mounted on the one volume and we can choose the cache device one and you can see that's going to set that up and click next and then again we can modify the allocated size here if we wanted to do that we can do that there and we can then apply this to our um, system and this will then give us that SSD cache what we wanted to so let's click apply and then we can understand that all the data will be overwritten on that drive click OK and it will load this up and start this over for us and get it all ready and that's basically how you can set that I mean you can see it's starting to do that for us there okay so you can see here we're setting up the security advisor on here as well and this is advisable to get this set up if you want to set this up it's pretty straightforward it says a little nag box there and you can set this up and once that's done you can see it's going to give us our setup here for the security advisor so what we need to do once we've got that done we can move on to something else which is our packages so I wanted to quickly show you through some of the packages that 
uh, Synology as because really with Synology you can use it for pretty much anything you like multimedia you can set it up for hyper backup desktop backup pretty much whatever you want to use your Synology for whether it'll be surveillance station or virtual machine or anything like that manager you can set this up and this will be in your package center there is a ton of packages which you can download and use and you can see here there is a ton of them hyper back up there we've got mail station here uh, you know photo station which is very good for all your photos you've got your active backup for business active backup for a G Suite uh, there as well so as you can see we have got lots to choose from here we've got our antivirus stuff here depending on what you're trying to do with your NAS drive you can set it up as a backup as a cloud sync you can do literally literally a DNS server on here the, the world's your oyster once you've got this you can back up your phone to it like I said it's really useful you can set up a Plex server on here you can set up some sort of other video server you've got proxy servers here you've got loads of stuff that you can do the surveillance station is pretty good as well uh, which is good for your home camera system so if you've got loads of uh, security cameras you can set that up on here as well and i shall cover some of these in up and coming videos let me know what you would like to see and i'll do my best to cover some of these for you in up and coming videos now also what you have to do is create an account you can add people to these accounts you can see we've got plex here as well so if you wanted to set up an, an account with uh, different people you can do and if you want to see me show you how to do that on a NAS drive I'll be happy to show you that let me know in the comments section below what you want to see but anyway I think that's going to be about it for this video that is the Synology DS920 plus pretty decent bit of kit so if you haven't got a network attached storage then give the disk station DS920 plus a look it's pretty decent and I can tell you, once you get something like this, you won't look back. It will be able to back up all of your data from your phone. You'll be able to share data with anyone around the world. Whatever you want to do, you can set this all up. Very simple and easy to do. I've done tutorials on this before. I'll leave all the information and the link in the video description if you're interested. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I shall see you again real soon. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, Hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.